Hi everybody and welcome back to another video on electronic science. So today we're going to be seeing what cool experiments we can do with this RGB LED. So stay tuned for a video on electronic science. Alright, hello everybody and welcome. Yes, everybody, this is my new lab coat, so I want to give a big thanks and a big shout out to my godparents for getting me this lab coat. It even has our logo, Electronic Science, and my name on it. It is the best lab coat ever, and I just want to give a big thanks to them. You will be seeing this uh, from every video from now on, and so, yeah, I hope you guys like it, and I hope you guys enjoy. Now let's see what cool things we can do with this RGB LED. Alrighty then everybody, so I have one of these RGB LEDs right here and I happen to have another one too. They both look a little bit different, but we're going to be using this one in today's video. So you may notice that the RGB LED has four pins instead of two pins that a traditional LED has. And you can see that each pin has a different length and size. Now the longest pin that you see right here is where you're going to connect the positive of your supply to. And the rest of them, you're going to connect the negative of your supply to, and you'll get a color. So if you're looking at it like this, the red pin is this one, green pin is this one, and blue pin is this one, RGB. And that's what RGB stands for, red, green, blue. So uh, in that case, that means we can put this onto a breadboard, and if we connect the positive to that long pin and connect the negative of our supply to any of these shorter pins, we will get a color. In case you're curious, the RGB LED runs on about 3.3 volts or less. But we are gonna need some resistors to put on the negative pins so that we don't blow the diodes inside. Alrighty then everybody, so we're gonna be wiring up the RGB LED right here to our supply. So you're gonna need at least one of these breadboard jumper wires and you're gonna to wanna to connect that on the positive rail of your breadboard to the longest pin of the RGB LED. That's where you're gonna want the positive to go. Now the rest, you're just gonna connect the negative to. Now I find that a 1K or a less resistor will work just fine. So here I have my resistor, and we're gonna connect that to the red pin of the RGB LED. So once we connect this, the RGB LED should illuminate red light. And as I said earlier, we're gonna be running it off of three volts. So let's see how this works. And we're going to connect the resistor to the red pin on the RGB LED. And as I said earlier, all the other pins just connect to the negative side of the supply. So the red pin happens to be the pin right here. So I'm going to connect the resistor to there and put the resistor on the negative rail on the breadboard. And we should get the LED to glow red. And now we can do the same effect on the green one for RG. For next one's green, so we go down to here. And we connect this one to the green pin. And we connect it to the negative there. And we get green. And the last one is blue. And there you have it. So that's how this RGB LED works. It's very, very simple. All you got to do is connect that long pin to the positive, And as long as you connect any of the other pins to the negative, you'll get a color. Okay, so that's cool and all, but this is an RGB LED, meaning that it can mix colors. So basically with this RGB LED, you can create any color in the rainbow. So if you connected all three of the pins together on the positive rail, you get white light. But if you connect red and blue together, you'll get purple. So basically we're just gonna be mixing colors with light instead of paint basically. So it's actually very cool. So let's try some of that now. All right, everybody. So from the previous clip, we still have the blue side of the RGB LED on. And I have another one of these resistors here. So once again, I'm going to connect the resistor to the negative rail on the breadboard and connect it to the red pin on the RGB LED. And red and blue should make purple. And there you have it. Now we have a purple LED. And uh, just for funsies, we could take another resistor and connect it to the green side of the LED. And with our, all RGB on, we should get somewhere around white. It's not gonna be a perfect white, but it will be pretty white. So here we go. I'm gonna connect the resistor to the negative side of the um, breadboard. And we're gonna connect it to the green pin of the RGB LED, if I can find it. And there you have it. We have white light. And now let's see what happens if we take away the um, red pin. We uh, cut power to the red pin and we keep uh, green and blue on. Let's see what kind of colors we get. And there you see, we kind of get this like turquoise blue type color. 
It's not exactly blue, but um, yeah, it's like a bluish greenish color. And let's see what happens if we take away the blue uh, pen. And there you have it. We now have a green RGB LED. So that's basically some of the neat things you could do with this RGB LED, but there's still more. Now being able to change the connection on the RGB LED to make it different colors is cool and all, but changing connections on a circuit that is live is not exactly safe and not exactly effective. So how can we solve this problem? Well, for one, we can use something called a potentiometer. A potentiometer is very much like a resistor, but something called a variable resistor. So meaning that if you turn the knob on the potentiometer, the resistance will change. So the more you turn it, the more resistance you get. The less you turn it, the less resistance you get. So in essence, this can also act as a switch. If we turn the resistance all the way up, the light will mainly turn off. But if we turn the resistance all the way down, the light will be on. So let's see what we can do with this little potentiometer. Now with the potentiometers in place label R, G, and B for red, green, and blue, we can change resistance on the potentiometers and you can see that we can turn on different colors. Now this is good if you wanna get in between colors like orange or maybe even more of a yellow color. But these potentiometers aren't that great because they don't turn it all the way off like an actual switch. They just change your resistance. So when you have the resistance cranked all the way up, the LED turns off but not all the way. So we still need to fix this problem. So you might be asking, how are we gonna fix this problem? Well, luckily it's 2020 and we're in the 21st century and uh, computers do a lot of the work for us. So luckily, and microcontrollers are gonna save us today. So yes, in today's video, we're gonna be using the Raspberry Pi as a microcontroller to control this RGB LED. Now you may remember a couple videos ago when I used the Raspberry Pi to create a traffic light system. Now, if you remember the GPIO pins, which stands for general purpose input output pins, output a positive voltage. So how do we make them output a negative voltage? Well, all you gotta do is include your script to make high false. And if you make the general purpose input output pins output a low signal, it outputs a negative part of a square wave essentially. So this will work. So here's a script we're going to be using in today's video. So right here, it's LED, RGB LED right here, 17, 18, and 22. So this stands for the GPIO ports that we're going to be using. So if we go on over to here, we can see that I have the RGB LED disconnected for right now. And the one with uh, without the resistor is the one that's connected to the 3.3 volt rail right there on the Raspberry Pi. And then everything else with the resistor is for the negative side of the LED and the colors. So it's going to go like this, just like you're reading a book, R, G, and B. And so red is connected to GPIO 17. And so if we trace back this resistor, it goes through this black wire here, all the way down, and into GPIO 17. And then green is going to be 18, and then blue is going to be 22, and those will trace back to the... GPIO pins. Now, something very important if you're going to be using the script that I use in today's video, which is that um, you're going to want to uh, label the GPIO pins accordingly to how your color is. So if you want red to be GPIO 17, you need to make sure that is the first GPIO listed in your script. If you want red to be GPIO 17, but you put GPIO 17 over here, and it won't be red. It'll it'll turn on a different, you know, time. So red will turn on second instead of first, which will screw up the entire script. So you don't want to do that. So make sure you label them the right way. And then down here, we have a while true statement. The while true statement is not necessary. You can keep this or you can remove it in your script. The only reason why I have it in my script is that the script repeats. That's all that while true is there for. And then down here, this is basically turning on the different pins of the LED. So a one is uh, a high, in a high state. So if you have, all right, so down here, if you have a one, the LED is gonna be on and then the zero means they're off essentially. So the first one happens to be red. So it's going to turn on the first pin on the um, RGB LED and keep the two other pins off so that only the red pin is on. And you can see that because the uh, LED is going to be facing this way. Uh, yeah, it's going to turn on this pin and then the rest are going to be off. And then over here for green RG, it's going to be the first one off, red off, green on, blue off. And then for blue, it's going to be red, green, and then blue on. And then uh, for purple, red, and blue, and so on and so forth. And then at the very end of the script, I have it for white, which is 111, which is all of them on. 
And then this is kind of like a, a greenish yellowish over here, which is red and green on and blue off. So yeah, but yeah, you can take a look at the script. Uh, and if you want to use the script, it works just fine. So let's wire up the LED to the Raspberry Pi and let's see how this script works. We wire up the LED to the Raspberry Pi. I just wanted to let you guys know this script is wrote in Python. Uh, so it's not wrote in C, so this is a Python script for those of you who are wondering or got concerned. And yeah, and I also forgot to mention from GPIO0 import RGB LED. That's just so that it knows. And then import from time, import sleep. This is so that you could turn the RGB LED on and off at a different time. And we'll play around with the sleep statements in a little while. But let's get started. Alrighty then, everybody. I have everything wired up, so let's start up the script. In three, two, one. Now this is just amazing. The script works perfectly, guys. And as you can see, it cycles through everything as I said the script would. So it starts off with red, then green, then blue, then purple, then yellow, and then white. And then loop continues with that while true statement in there. Now, as you can see, the colors change every second, every one second we have it as a sleep statement. But we can change that so we can make it go every half a second or every two seconds or even every five minutes if we wanted to. Or if you wanted to, we could cut the script way in half and we could just make it turn on red or blue or purple or whatever you'd like. So have fun tinkering with this script because this script has a lot of potential. And now that we have it connected to a microcontroller, it's like an automated system. So we don't have to adjust potentiometers or change connections. So it's way safer now and it's way cooler. And it's almost like a little RGB LED light strip that you can line around an office or bedroom. So yeah, this is very cool. Now let's have a little bit of fun with the script. See how we have it sleep uh, one second every one second? That means the colors will change every one second. Let's change this to 0.5 or every half a second to see what happens. Alrighty, we have it at 0.5. Let's run the script and see what craziness happens now. Alrighty, guys, ready? We're going to start the script in 3, 2, 1. And as you can see, it's going uh, twice as fast now because it's half of what we had it before. And this is actually kind of cool how it goes twice as fast. I kind of think I like it a little bit better. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And obviously you can increase the speed to, you know, every two seconds or every five seconds. Or you can, you know, decrease it to every, you know, 0.1 second or every millisecond. Whatever you want. So the script has great potential. Or you can leave out some things like if you don't like the red, you can take out the red part of the script. Or if you don't want white, you can take that part out of the script. And, uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy. Hey then, guys, so just before we sign it off here, I sh shortened down the script now to just the red part, and as we can see, the RGB LED is stuck at red. But now, just say we want to make it green. Well, this is very easy. All we have to do is take this 1, make that a 0, and then take the 0 and make that a 1. And now, if we save the script and we run it, I'll zoom you guys back here. If we run it, we now get a green LED. And if we want a blue LED, all you got to do is the same thing. Make this a zero and then make this a one. Save the script and then run it again. You get a blue LED. And then if you want to mix the colors together, blue and red makes purple. We could just take this zero, make this a one so that red and blue will turn on. We save the script and run it. We should get a purple LED. And there you have it. So it's basically just like how the previous script works, only it keeps going in, um, in a loop and it changes all the time to make it look like an RGB effect. So yeah, that's basically how the script works. So I hope you guys liked it. So there you guys have it, how to make an RGB LED do some pretty cool things and how to script an RGB LED to make it look like it's on an RGB LED light strip. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did this, please remember to leave a thumbs up on this video. And also subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you like our content. Also leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this project, have any uh, good video ideas for the future, or if you just like to comment. But anyways guys, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I'm Electronic Science. Big shout out to my godparents for giving me this lab coat. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.